मृणमयी चेक करशी ना लाईव्ह आहे का येस मॅम वी आर लाईव्ह ओके सो हॅलो एव्हरी वन वी आर नाव स्टार्टिंग विथ द सेकंड लेक्चर इन द सिरीज कॉल्ड रिफ्लेक्शन्स दिस सिरीज इज कंडक्टेड और होस्टेड बाय द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश पेमरा सारडा कॉलेज अहमदनगर अँड टुडे वी हॅव डॉक्टर दिलीप चव्हाण प्रोफेसर एस आर टी एम यू युनिव्हर्सिटी नांदेड ॲज आर गेस्ट स्पीकर I would just like to say a few words about uh, what is the idea behind uh, launching this series. Uh, this is kind of first uh, online lecture series uh, by the department. And this is uh, started mm-hmm. in this academic year, current academic year, that is 23-24. This series will hold talks around various topics which are related to, but uh, not really limited to, Uh, various topics like literature theory culture translation and language etc so now i would like to request my colleague dr satyajit patil to kindly introduce uh, today's speaker patil sir thank you ma'am uh, good afternoon to all the viewers and listeners of the second online lecture in reflections uh, an intellectual initiative by the department of english pemra sarada college ahmednagar It's my pleasant duty to bid a gen- genial welcome to Professor Dilip Chavan, who is the esteemed guest speaker for today's talk. Dr. Dilip works in the Department of English School of Language, Literature and Cultural Studies at Swami Ramananda Tirth Marathwada University, Nanded. He specializes in social linguistics with a wide range of interests that range from language education to literary theory. He has almost three decades experience of teaching at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. I proudly recall his brief association with the PG department of my college as a visiting faculty way back in 2007-8. A passionate teacher and a radical thinker, Dilip gave up his government job to join a college. He earned PhD in English from Pune University for the thesis entitled language politics under colonialism caste class and language pedagogy in western india in 2009 a revised version of this thesis was published by cambridge scholars publishing england in 2013 this book attempts to capture the reconfiguration of the pre modern power structure with colonialism in the specific context of education and linguistic policies implemented by the colonial administration of western india besides this he has also written a few really thought provoking books in marathi that uh, promise to tease us out of our comfort zones dr chavan was awarded with associateship by the ugc iuc indian institute of advanced study shimla for 3 years he joined the srtm university in andhra in 2009 where he has held different key positions in academics and administration to name a few he has been member of bos in english a uh, member of academic council shahu college latur head department of english director school of language literature and cultural studies and he has been coordinator of center for foreign languages soft skill and personality development program and dr baba saheb ambedkar chair and study center he introduced many new courses at pg level such as social linguistics cultural studies and translation studies he has to his credit quality research output in the form of scholarly publications paper presentations and chapters in books he is a research guide has chaired many sessions and has been a guest speaker on many occasions and icing on the cake he is the executive editor of two reputed UGC care listed journals in Marathi, Parivartana Chav Atsuru and Akshar Gatha. Presently, he is working on the Marathi corpus of 50,000 words to be published by the Oxford University Press. Today, Professor Dilip Chavan will enlighten us on the topic reading science. Most of us are acquainted with the centrality of the concept of science in the semiotic approach ascribed to 
Ferdinand Saussure as well as Roland Barthes. Simultaneously, this term finds a firm foothold in various streams of thought in cultural studies led by Stuart Hall and Dick Hebdige. After all, Hall's conceptual map and uh, Hebdige's interpretation of youth's subcultures with the study of the punk emerge from the rethinking of the notion of sign. Without wasting any more time, may I uh, now request you, Professor Dilip Chavan, to share your precious perspectives and perceptions on science. Dilip, uh, I think Dilip sir has left uh, somehow, so we will have to wait for a second or two till he rejoins. Okay, he's joining now. Yeah. Yeah. Dilip, sir, can you hear us? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I, I think I had got disconnected for a while. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm audible to you all. Yes. Yes, sir. Are. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for inviting me to speak on reading signs. Uh, I was in Ahmednagar for quite a long time. I had my degree from Ahmednagar College. Then I taught English in New Arts Commerce and Science College for 13 years. And uh, for a very brief period, I also remained associated with the postgraduate department of English of uh, Pembra Sarda College, Ahmednagar. So I, I, I really feel proud to have uh, had my association with at least three colleges in Ahmednagar city. Uh, I, I must admit that uh, so far as the departments of uh, English in these three colleges are concerned, there has uh, always been very cordial kind of relationship, uh, a sort of say uh, comradeship or we can say um, uh, some kind of solidarity where uh, people always had friendly uh, sort of relationship visiting each other's departments and delivering lectures and all that. So this is something that is most required, particularly at a time when uh, uh, the whole of academics is under threat uh, for many reasons. So this kind of cordial relationship will certainly grow in future, I'm sure. And uh, somehow we can help humanities and many other disciplines which have been uh, threatened by uh, many forces for many different reasons will survive. Uh, I, I suppose I am audible to you all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. 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 Very much. Yeah. Uh, uh, this lecture is primarily uh, meant for the students doing MA in the Department of English at uh, Sarda College, Amannaga. I wanted it to be a sort of an interactive session, but since this is uh, a YouTube live, we really can't have uh, interactions till we finish this session. Uh, so I, I will miss uh, uh, the responses, questions, and uh, uh, whatever that the students really uh, otherwise would have done in the meanwhile. Uh, if uh, uh, I can, may, may, I suggest, may I suggest one thing? Uh, you can take one or two, let's say, pauses in between your lecture, and then you can hmm. ask for questions. We can wait for a few seconds. If uh, right, the students right. like, uh, type any questions in the YouTube chat, then we can yeah. uh, convey those yes. questions to you. Yeah. Uh, despite uh, uh, this being, uh, I mean, uh, YouTube live, I would like to begin with a question. My question to all the students who are present here is uh, whether they have uh, noticed the logo of any college or Sarda College for that matter. Yes, sir. Can you write? I think in the chat box you can write. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't, you have to. 
uh, there are four colleges uh, as i understand in the city perhaps more than four but uh, four uh, arts commerce and science colleges uh, in amnagar city amnagar college then new arts commerce and science college you also have radhabai kale mahila mahavidyalay uh, and pemra sarada college so what uh, you need to do is to pay a close attention to one thing which is available uh, almost every everywhere almost visible in every uh, document uh, uh, every corner of the campus that is the logo of uh, your college what is remarkable about any logo it is it is usually uh, a unique one a distinct one and that certainly is not meaningless we usually feel that a logo uh, doesn't have much meaning as such but uh, it does have so in a very uh, fundamental sense every logo is a kind of sign s i g n and we have to have a little say uh, understanding of sign some primary understanding of sign now what is sign sign is uh, a very significant term a sort of an area of inquiry in almost every field of knowledge in humanities and uh, social sciences in the last uh, at least 3 to 4 decades we we can see there has been uh, a very rich uh, scholarship on the idea of sign now sign as a notion is very old if you go back to the ancient times you will find various social groups ethnic groups ethnic societies used to have their own signs as uh, their unique we can say identity these signs in the earliest uh, we can say known history of human civilization existed in the form of totem a totem was a sort of a sign uh, which represented the community uh, that Uh, that held that particular totem and it used to be uh, shown uh, in a very visible uh, manner uh, outside the camp or sometimes uh, inside the official uh, buildings uh, of uh, these groups of these ethnic societies uh, there are certain totems available to us from the ancient society which you can study and there are certain studies which are uh, based on the totems of the ancient societies if you read uh, uh, some of the ancient philosophers such as plato and aristotle you will find these philosophers also referring to uh, the idea of sign but in the 20th century uh, as patil sir has already pointed out there emerged a very systematic way of studying science and there were philosophers and uh, political thinkers also linguists and of recent some cultural studies scholars who contributed to the debate on science uh, there were some scholars such as uh, john lock uh, as mentioned in uh, in uh, just a few minutes ago fadinandi sasur uh, and then we have uh, charles peers and a few sociologists such as pierre bodiu and a few marxist uh, scholars such as uh, holoshinov a russian uh, we can call him a social linguist or a scholar of uh, linguistics named uh, valentine holoshinov who tried to theorize what is called as sign now sign uh, you know we usually tend to certain images as signs for example pemra sarada college has its own logo or uh, there is a college just 
close to Pembra Sarda College, I already mentioned New Arts, Commerce and Science College, which also has its logo. Perhaps uh, Amannagar Corporation also has its own logo. I remember when the corporation came into being in the year 2003, there was uh, a sort of competition held by the municipal corporation, newly formed corporation, and uh, so many artists submitted uh, their own designs, their own logos, out of which just one was selected. The logo that you have in Amannaga was uh, created uh, jointly by uh, one artist called Vitankar and a retired professor of philosophy from Amannagar College named Heman Gokhale. So every establishment such as Amannagar Municipal Corporation uh, or Jilla Parishad Amannagar or any corpor any uh, governing uh, governmental or non-governmental body for, for that matter has its own logo and a logo carries certain meaning. I mean, it is uh, very uh, nonsensical to really say that a logo doesn't have any meaning. A logo has a meaning. A logo has its own structure, one. Then it also stands for something. That is the second aspect of logo. It goes beyond what is visible physically. I mean, you have a design. Uh, some sort of god or goddess or some kind of a figure, some icon from the history or some uh, uh, some extracts from some scripture. For example, the Amannagar College uh, logo has uh, a, 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 a saying from the Bible. So a logo may contain some sentence or a few words from uh, uh, from some scripture or for, for, from some book usually uh, from the past many of the logos have uh, a few words usually three to four words and in india many logos bear these words or sentences or sayings in sanskrit for example i am uh, speaking from uh, uh, from a university located in nanded which has its own logo uh, and at the bottom of the logo there is some sort of uh, a sentence which comes from some scripture it is in sanskrit so many logos have certain texts which had its roots in some or the other say religious or cultural text so uh, my point is a logo stands beyond its physicality it takes you beyond its existence its physical existence the figures, the images, the sketches, the color, you know, that is used. For example, Amannaga College logo is, is in uh, uh, faint blue, uh, you, uh, sort of say dark sky blue, uh, blue uh, color used. Sarda College, I really don't remember, but some color is used. Uh, uh, New Arts Commerce Science College logo, when I remember when I was uh, there, it used to be in red. So uh, a particular color is used to, to suggest something. You know, colors are highly suggestive. We can't say that colors uh, really are meaningless or uh, they are arbitrarily or uh, whimsically chosen by the designers, not at all. Colors, everything, every small part of a sign that we come across has some meaning. So what we have to understand here is a sign uh, essentially stands for something something which uh, uh, which always uh, remains hidden something that you always uh, have to look for the meaning which can subjectively be analyzed claimed interpreted and also challenged so uh, that is where you enter into an altogether different realm, an untrodden realm, we can say, or uh, uh, a very uh, ambiguous, vague field of meaning, where uh, multiplicity of meaning really matters a lot. A certain sign doesn't have any fixed meaning for, for all, all the viewers. For example, I can view uh, a particular sign
am i audible to you i, I think i am shouting i have lo I, i i didn't speak through online mode for many many months as i have really stopped using this kind of a, a medium for lecturing so we, you are very well audible dilip there is no problem uh, with that so you can go ahead uh, with the lecture and the students you. yeah students are writing uh, in the youtube live chat so if they have any questions or doubts they will type uh, them there and yeah. we can so, uh, so i yeah um, yeah my we are all in yeah. studio so we are also listening all four of us so <laughs> there are people around uh, you no problem <laughs> yeah my initial submission uh, is uh, we all must uh, look at whatever signs that we come across Uh, very carefully so as to have better understanding of science you know we are the students of literature or linguistics or semiotics so uh, science do matter a lot to us ha huh. uh, now we move from the third aspect so uh we uh, am uh, i am i audible to you uh, uh dilip i fear you don't have a very good connectivity it seems because uh, just now no, there I... is a loud noise yeah Yeah, yeah. They, I had a call. Ah, acha, okay, so, fine. Uh, a little disruption. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Ha. So, ha have you joined joined from your mobile phone? Yes, yes. Okay, so yeah. uh, may I suggest you you can put your uh, mobile on uh, airplane mode so that you don't receive any calls in between. Oh no, that will also uh, cut you off from the network. I I fear. So let it be, whatever the system is. shall we shall we continue yes we can yeah ha huh. ah uh, yes uh, our our first argument was uh, signs you know are not just meaningless then we tried to learn how signs stand for the values and say a uh, meaning outside their own physicality and the third uh, aspect uh, we can say here is uh, uh, how we uh, as the students of uh, linguistics or stylistics or semiotics or literature whatever uh, have to enter into uh, a sort of a realm a sort of a field where we try to make sense of science how do we decipher science how do we understand science how do we mean how to derive meaning what does a sign mean to us to the students of semiotics to the students of linguistics or to the students of literature for that matter okay so uh, here uh, we uh, we are here now into the field where uh, meaning matters a lot and how do we mean uh what we see now some scholars now uh, i will uh, start with one russian uh, linguist 
uh, i already made a mention of uh, this linguist valentine voloshino valentine voloshino wrote a book called marxism and the philosophy of language almost a century ago uh, in which he argued uh, he also tried to respond to uh, <clears throat> sashur you know who had really failed to locate science in the social context which itself is marked by a sort of contradiction a sort of say uh, conflict ridden uh, social relationship so how do we understand society here matters a lot for sashur you know uh, a little thought was given by sashur to the formation of the society in which signs are made in which signs are also read by us so we are part of the wider society and uh, we uh, have developed our own consciousness only in relation with the society for quite a long time so what whatever, whatever consciousness that that uh, we have gained is an output of our own complex relationship with the society which itself is uh, uh, a, a ridden a, con a sort of say contradiction ridden society where you find a lot of contradictions you know there are people who are very poor there are people who are very rich there are people who are uh, uh, very dominant there are people who get dominated by others there are men and there are women there are people who follow patriarchal values there are people who who wish to get rid of patriarchal say domination so there are you know certain contradictions in the society there are certain say uh, conflicts in the society which certainly matter a lot when uh, the shaping of consciousness is concerned so how do we understand science as to uh, how do we really understand the genesis of science the roots of science so here uh uh soon after uh, very soon we can say after the structuralists were trying to interpret sign without ever referring to the uh, the complexity of uh, the social relationships in which the human beings uh, have to enter into without any uh, any kind of uh, uh, what you can say no choice so when you enter into social relationship you are not left with any choice as such when you come to your college when you talk to your professors when you talk to your friends uh, when you go back and uh, uh, ask your mother or sister to uh, make a uh, cup of tea for you if you are a male member and if you are used to that kind of a practice so every kind of social act in that sense uh, is something that is constitutive of whatever signs that we come across so signs are very much intimately associated with the society which itself is formed of a certain kind of social relationship i hope uh, i am audible to you all and i am adequately uh, audible and uh, i hope uh, everybody uh, does understand me i mean particularly students Uh, yes, Dilip, yeah. there is no problem with uh, either with video or audio. And if you would like mm. to browse through uh, the comments or the presence of students on YouTube, uh, you have a comments uh, tab on the right hand side of your screen. I don't know how it looks on the mobile screen, but it is there on the laptop screen. So you can have a look at it later. Yeah, so you may continue with uh, your talk.
Yeah. Am yeah. I visible? Yes. Yes, you are. I you had are lost. Yeah. While reading this, the chat, I had lost touch with you again. Hmm. So I hope uh, now I'm uh, comfortably audible to you. Yes. Yes. You are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, Voloshino wrote a book called uh, Marxism and the Philosophy of Language almost a century ago, in which he challenged some of the assumptions on which the uh, structuralist understanding of uh, science was based. Here, Voloshino borrows certain ideas from Karl Marx, who had already uh, developed a theory of ideology and also a theory of consciousness, though in a suggestive way. I mean, Marx did not uh, very explicitly write uh, on ideology and consciousness, but we need to really recognize the significance of uh, his early writings, so far as uh, early writings on ideology, so far as uh, 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 the uh, the uh, later debate on ideology is concerned. Marx provided a sort of currency to the terms uh, ideology and consciousness that they enjoy today. And uh, according to Marx, ideology uh, is a, is something which uh, has its own roots in our socio-economic life. So, so ideology is not just uh, an assemblage of ideas, a group of ideas which are uh, which come together in, uh, in 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 a voluntary manner as such. No, for Karl Marx, there is a certain section of uh, of the human society, particularly in the modern society, which is very much interested in controlling the economy that is the means of production the mode of production the production system as a whole as well as the cultural aspect of the society the cultural means of production also in the society so the dominant class tries to dominate both economy as, as well as the world of uh, ideas or, or we can say the cultural world or we can say uh, the world of science as S I G N S, you know the 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 world of uh, icons, the world of uh, we can say logos. So how does it happen? Is a very complex question because uh, uh, this kind of politics it has always been uh, uh, been uh, very much invisible and uh, 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 complex to understand. So we have to begin with Holoshino, who made a very a uh, powerful argument by saying that essentially every word is a sign. I mean, we use words. Uh, how do we use words? If we speak, words are used in the form of sounds. And uh, writing is an attempt of uh, representing visual, uh, uh, representing words in visual symbols. So what, what do we do? We write. We write words and if you look at uh, some of the languages such as uh, uh, the Chinese language, you will find how uh, there are uh, a lot of say pictorial uh, uh, issues, pictorial forms that uh, that were adopted while developing this language. So uh, words in that sense uh, can be seen as signs and what are signs? For Holoshino, signs are not free of the social context in which they are produced, in which they are used, in which they are transmitted. A certain sign has a lot of uh, suggestive meaning. For example, the logo of a college or the logo of a university, you know, it, it has some meaning for us all. And this meaning itself needs to be understood in its social context. We cannot really have uh, uh, any understanding of science sign, uh, we, uh, by divorcing a sign from its social context. 
from its social origin so holoshino tells us that all the signs are essentially ideological in nature there is a, a chapter called I, i mean a chapter on the ideological uh, nature of science in his book where he tells us how uh, sign needs to be studied in relation to ideology in fact he defines signs as uh, uh, a sign uh, as something that represents depicts and stands for something lying outside itself now the world outside the physicality of sign is not free from the ideological influences hello holoshino discussed an example of uh, of the sign of the communist party the symbol of the communist party of russia so if you have a look at uh, any of the pamphlets uh, published by the communist party of any country for that matter it usually bears something like a hammer uh, or a sickle or uh, some kind of a tool which stands for the working class which stands for labor which stands for the toiling masses which stands for something like say repression or oppression or exploitation so something which is related to the material world you will not find the communist party adopting a sign which is very much abstract in nature uh, you will find many religious groups adopting their own uh, signs or their own uh, what you can say logos which are very uh, symbolic or which are very mysterious or we can say uh uh highly uh, uh uh we can say mysterious but uh, the communist party of russia that time you know adopted a a a, a symbol which used to be a, a sickle uh and a hammer so what what do they stand for this they, they stand for the workers who work with these tools to create to produce something new and holoshino also used another sign which was uh, popular in christianity and that that was the sign of uh, uh, wine you know which used to uh, which is uh, symbolically distributed in the church and it symbolically stands for the blood of jesus christ Uh, so an again uh, a kind of say sacrifice that the founder of christianity made for the wider humanity so by uh, taking one sip of wine you in a sense internalize the values of jesus so many rituals which are practiced in uh, many religions also have got some kind of symbolic meaning and there is a lot of symbolism there are so many signs used in any kind of uh, uh, religious practice so holoshino tells us that a sign does not exist outside the social reality outside the material reality so we need to relate signs to the wider social or material world so wherever there is a sign there is the presence of ideology some ideology is very much present there uh, there is a statement made by voloshino uh, he says that everything ideological possesses semiotic value so something that is ideological also takes some kind of semiotic nature semiotic value or semiotic form so how do you communicate your own ideas how do you communicate your own ideology if you look at the religious groups for example whatever be the religion every religious group uses a lot of symbolism to communicate something so something that is ideological takes a semiotic form and that is open for analysis open for what you can say discussion open for 
uh, interpretation and and also a critic critical uh, appraisal so you can always have some kind of critical engagement uh, with uh, the world outside us which is full of signs you just turn your neck and you will find some of the some of the the sign so signs do contribute to the making of our consciousness i mean we made a beginning by uh arguing that signs are not just useless or meaningless so uh, there is some kind of uh, some kind of significant value attached to sign there is some kind of philosophy some kind of ideology ingrained in every kind of sign so a sign um needs to be understood with all the complexity that is attached to it a sign also needs to be understood by relating it to the wider society and by relating it to other signs for example uh, uh, a logo of a college college a you know you can always make a comparison with uh, uh, a logo of another college so there are two logos there are two signs so you can <coughs> just a minute yeah <clears throat> sorry uh so you can make a comparative study of two signs or three signs or four signs and you can always study as to why a particular sign is designed uh by a particular artist and what made a particular organization adopt a particular world of sign a sign uh can be uh of varying kinds a sign can be very simple it can be very complex it can be a just a single color many colors it can be a many images uh then we have an assemblage of signs when you have a logo usually just have a look at a logo of a university or an, or any establishment for that matter you will find it usually is a there is a collection of many signs for example if you uh, uh, study if you have a look at the logo of uh, uh, savitri bai phule pune university the university that your college is, is affiliated to uh, you will find there are so many uh, so many images uh, involved in the in that particular logo you know there is a, a shanivar wada there is a, a medieval building called shanivar wada at the center of the logo there is a temple Uh, there is one fort named raigad and uh, i think there are swords also some some structure which looks like uh, uh, like a sword and uh, uh, there is a book and something is written the name of the university is written on two pages of the book and uh, 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 there is a, a sentence also you know <coughs> just a minute Oh, which is bought which has been borrowed from the mahabharata it, it is uh, it is a dialogue between yudhishthir and some other uh, character in mahabharata so uh, there is uh, uh, some kind of say reference to the mahabharata also so a sign uh, 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 or a logo always uh, is a very complex phenomenon because it involves a lot of images and uh, so many things from so many uh, uh, parts of the history ages of the history for example the logo of savitri bai phule pune university you know involves uh, ideas from the ancient then the medieval and also from the modern uh, society so a logo essentially uh, makes a very complex case of uh values and ideologies together put together so we have to understand that every uh logo or every sign is a kind of a social construct 
now uh, which itself is an output of uh, a very uh, systematically structured society a society is not just an assemblage of uh, people it's not just a collection of people not that there are just one uh, 140 crore people living in india it is not just a collection of 140 crore people it it it, it we have to look at india as a very organized kind of uh, a society along several lines such as religion caste language ethnicity you know i mean in for that for 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 some reason ethnicity also matters a lot when uh, uh when it comes to say india or or america or any society for that matter and uh, uh, in the modern times it is class so we are also a class society divided along the economic lines divided along uh, say uh, the, the 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 amount of assets the actual number of assets and the value of the assets that we possess so science become uh, in in any modern society also an arena of class struggle for example uh, I, i already referred to uh, one sim kind of say symbolism uh, introduced by the communist party of russia some uh, again uh, more than a uh, 100 years ago so the symbol used by the communist party of india bears certain images certain ideas certain tools which represent the laboring classes in the world so uh, there are other images which certainly do not represent the laboring classes so sign also becomes an area of some kind of say social uh, conflict some kind of say class struggle or some kind of say political or ideological conflict you must have seen um uh, uh many conflicts in the world not just in india but also in many um developed countries many uh, very uh, highly modernized and liberal cities such as london you know the city of london was put on fire uh, in the 2011 on certain uh symbolic and ideological issues there are many ethnic conflicts now seen in the countries such as uh, uh, france and italy over certain uh ideologies and uh, use of certain signs so signs uh, simply do not uh, make um uh, you know any uh kind of say uh, insignificance i mean we 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 can't j- simply deem science as insignificant you know they are highly uh, volatile and uh, they can be used very pragmatically to uh, what we can say divide the society or organize the society or create a sort of say, uh, say social tension in the society or sometimes signs also lead some kind of conflict in the society so uh, this is the reason why uh, we have to pay attention to one discipline uh, which is uh, usually uh, taught in the literature courses called semiotics but again there is a lot of development so far as uh, semiotics is concerned we now move to a very refined very sophisticated sophisticated understanding of semiotics where uh, we can relate science to many other ideas such as power ideology and conflict so there is some kind of say uh, uh very uh, sophisticated understanding of uh, semiotics possible today because of uh, advancement in theory for example i was in pune uh, just yesterday and uh, uh, i uh, traveled from one place to another place 
by pune metro first time uh, uh, for me it was a first journey and as we have uh, uh, in uh, in in the local trains in mumbai and buses uh, city buses and even other buses also uh, some seats reserved for women i came to know yesterday that there is a certain compartment reserved for women in in pune metro and it was marked in pink so i was a little surprised uh, to see the color pink used for women so i just wanted to ask uh, the students who are present here uh, whether they know that pink is somehow associated with gender or the colors are associated with gender what do you think madhuri can you just read a couple of responses so i, so I can uh, take uh, rest for a while yes i have typed the question in the live uh, chat on youtube so just wait for a few seconds till the students reply to that students please write your responses do you think that the pink color should be associated with feminine gender or do you uh, notice that pink is always associated with the feminine gender with women does have any meaning any value attached to them yeah i think we all know and we do understand that they do they do have for example uh, uh, just a few months ago or maybe a few weeks ago uh, there was a protest march organized by uh, the maratha community in maharashtra holding flags you know which were saffron in color i hope you uh, you all remember this or if there is uh, 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 any uh, sort of march organized by the muslim community usually it is the green flag held high so christianity has used extensively white you know for some reason so colors you know when when we have uh, uh, religious communities we always find colors um, uh, being used uh, for suggesting something now but uh, we have to go beyond the religious uh, symbolism and understand how in the modern sense in the modern society colors came to be associated with uh, uh, with uh, many other ideas and groups such as the pink color now being uh, very extensively uh, identified with girls and women if you go to the uh, to a toy shop you will find many uh, many toys meant for girls in pink so why pink hello uh, there are still no responses from the students uh, really. so but I, i had got disconnected again for a while yes. okay now yes. am i audible, audible to yes, you yes you are you are yes you are audible, okay. audible as well as yeah. visible no problem yeah. uh so quite interestingly this color pink uh is uh, seen as a combination of two colors red and white where red stands for passion and white stands for peace so very strange so women uh, are supposed to be possessing two values one passion uh, and the other that is patience so 
the pink color is not really uh, just meaningless when it is used you know is not uh, meaninglessly used for women you know when it is used for women it is also understood that uh, they should be uh, patient and uh, they should also be calm and peace loving creatures so this kind of uh, color code when when used for a particular sex uh, a particular group of people very uh, what you can say deliberately it, it when it when it when it when it happens it certainly uh, uh, contributes to some kind of stereotyping of uh, the uh, sex sex or gender roles in the society so color the use of color also carries some kind of meaning when it is used in the social context first of all we need to understand that signs do not exist in a vacuum you know they exist very much in the social context they are very much made by by the human beings who have already entered into some kind of social relationship with the other human beings what are we what are we as the makers of science we are the ones who have inevitably entered into some kind of complex human relationship with other human beings some kind of relationship with other human beings so science need to be understood uh, in this kind of say complex uh, 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 context Shall I, shall I stop here for a while? Uh, if you uh, require a pause, yes. And there is also uh, a response to the earlier question regarding the pink color. And the response says, it's by Rohi, Ronit. It says that uh, pink is a calming color, uh, which is associated with love. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> yeah yes fine <clears throat> so how how do we decide that pink stands for love again a very complex question uh, long ago padinandi sashur you know argued that this kind of relationship is very much arbitrary i mean it is arbitrarily decided that a certain color stands for a certain value so the relationship between uh, between the value that that uh, a certain sign stands for is always arbitrarily decided let me explain uh, this point to you uh, a few years ago there was a movement launched in mumbai a short lived movement for the change of the logo of the bomb the then bombay university now we call it mumbai university so this logo you know bore uh, the image of a beer and it was thought i mean it was officially mentioned in the document that this some of the images in the logo stood for the british crown or the royal family or some kind of say colonial context so there was a movement to decolonize the university logo and soon after india became independent this logo of the then bombay university was changed now i i, I would all request you to uh, uh to to find time to have a look at the logo of the uh, mumbai university today so it is uh, different than what it used to be when india was uh, being ruled by the british so uh, how do we know that a certain animal in a logo stands for the royal family or the part of the head of uh, a certain animal stands for the crown so how can the part of uh, an animal body stands for the british crown so that is all arbitrarily university located in aurangabad 
it has its own logo uh, i would request you all to read uh, the meaning of the logo which is officially given on the university website so there are two elephants uh, in the logo and the website tells us that these elephants stand for the people of maharashtra now how is this decided upon or agreed upon by all i mean do, how can we really uh, decide that the elephants stand for the people so fine ping stands for love but my point is it is arbitrarily decided first of all we have to at least uh, recognize uh, 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 the importance of what sashu was trying to tell us almost a century ago but we need to go beyond uh, sashu and understand how uh, if it stands for love it it comes to be associated with women and not men how do we 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 understand that women are loving caring um and uh, men are not and why should they be now the feminist movement has already challenged this kind of association of uh, i mean arbitrarily decided kind of uh, meaning uh, i mean association between women and a certain kind of symbolism so what do women do yeah they do care they do love and now the feminist scholars argue that there is a lot of emotional labor produced by women so in the name of care and love they are meant to produce a lot of emotional love in, in, including uh, uh, child rearing you know uh, there is something called child care that a woman is supposed to be responsible for so there is so much of uh, labor involved in care so this kind of labor is called as uh, now called as emotional labor which again gets associated with certain kind of uh, 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 stereotype that that remains uh, associated with gender in the society so pink stands for love fine i mean uh, it is uh, understood but then it again gets associated with women something that makes us understand how science are essentially ideological how they are loaded with a certain kind of ideology political religious cultural or whatever madhuri can you add a little here uh not much actually because uh, i mean you have made it sufficiently clear uh, okay. but yes uh, as you said that there is a socio cultural political uh, even economical context uh, that goes in the making of a logo uh, it i think it's a, a two sided process uh, the socio economic cultural political context can also be decoded uh, when the logo is received by the future generations you know and that's how you can understand a part of history part of social history so to say so uh, i'm thinking about uh, that point also how logos are useful uh, they can almost uh, behave like tools in understanding uh, the past the social history of people and also the history of conflicts social conflicts in that particular society yeah yeah fine yeah. yes uh, now i will conclude <clears throat> uh we have a university called savitri bai phule pune university and uh, pemra sarda college is officially affiliated to this university i will uh, request you all uh, to please uh, uh pay a little attention to the logo of uh, this university there is uh, some meaning of this logo provided by the university on its website which you need to read uh this logo was made by a student a, a sort of an alumnus of this university named uh, purushottam dikshit uh, around the year 1950 and it's a very complex logo i would certainly request you to uh, compare the logo of uh, this university with the logo of uh, jawarlal nehru university delhi 
और हैदराबाद से इंटर यूनिवर्सिटी हैदराबाद और मुंबई यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर दैट मैटर सो यू कैन ऑलवेज हैव अ कंपेरेटिव स्टडी ऑफ वेरियस लोगोज सो एज टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ लोगोज डू रिफ्लेक्ट you know a certain kind of cultural politics you know which also uh, was in which uh, was involved in the making of these universities for example jnu which came into being in the year 1973 with uh, its own mandate and necessities so uh, jnu has its own logo and savitri bai phule pune university which came into existence in the year 1948 uh also uh, had its own very complex socio educational background the university uh was established in the year 1948 49 but there was a movement which was led by two prominent intellectuals of maharashtra named datto aman poddar and uh 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 another just a minute uh another uh, historian named uh, vk rajwade so these were the prominent uh, names from the cultural politics of pune city in the first half of the uh, 20th century and they were the ones who spearheaded a sort of a movement for the foundation of this university for 25 years and then the university came into existence and after the university uh, was established a, a logo was uh, made and it was officially accepted and after that there was a movement for change in the logo of the uh, mumbai university but there wasn't any sort of say thought given to any kind of change in the logo of this university for some reasons so i stop here i wish you to pay attention to uh, uh, many logos and the cultural politics uh, involved in 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 them yeah uh, thank you dilip uh, shall we take up a few questions there are two or three questions by the students yes yes yeah surely uh, i would ask uh, Murmai to uh, handle the Q and A, please. Murmai. Okay. Uh, without wasting time, let me handle that till Murmai appears uh, in the studio. Uh, there is one question uh, regarding the. Uh, the discussion about the pink color and femininity and whether we have we see some meaning uh, or in the in the association of color with certain quality uh, let me just go to the youtube chat and i'll read it out to you ha huh. here is the question uh, given india's this is asked by jaya mehtani who is our uh, ma part 2 student uh, dilip are you there hello hello we'll have to wait for the speaker i guess ha huh. uh, sorry can ha can you, can, huh, can you please repeat yes yes sure uh, this question goes like this that given india's diverse religious landscape don't you think that the logos of universities and educational institutions should also embody secular values yes of course but they don't many many of them don't yeah they should but they don't uh, i would uh, like to draw your attention to the logos of two university one is uh, banaras hindu university called as bhu and another one is aligarh muslim university called amu so you can visit the websites of these universities and just have a look at the logos of these universities and you will come to know how uh, logos of the universities which are modern uh, secular institutions 
or uh, deeply mired into some kind of religious symbolism so of course that uh, uh, is very much contradictory to the function of a university the function of any modern university in any secular society for that matter so what does the university stand for a uh, university essentially stands for humanism secularism and liberalism so the logos of the universities also should uh, uh, be aligned uh, with uh, this kind of uh, broad ideological values that the universities are associated with am i audible yes you are okay uh, uh, may i also read a comment by the same student uh, which was about as i said the association of Uh, color with certain meaning uh, she writes uh, there is a push towards challenging and deconstructing such color coded gender norms nowadays so how would you like to elaborate on this yeah i mean uh, there there isn't any significant challenge to it uh, the market has already taken over the world of uh, logos and signs so there is uh, a great amount of uh, uh, regimentation and uh, uh, what we can say uh, ideological maneuvering involved in essentializing certain uh, patterns and roles through symbols through colors so there there hasn't been any significant uh, challenge uh given to this kind of uh, cultural politics so far not even by the feminist but there should be i mean we 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 we, we should always have some kind of critical engagement with the world around us which certainly involves logos and images signs and language which which itself is uh, a system of signs i mean one way of defining language is a system of signs the signs could be visible visible or verbal so i think it requires critical engagement that but there hasn't been any uh, significant challenge uh, given to uh, this type of uh, stereotyping you know that is made possible by uh, very violent use of the world of images yeah i mean there should be there hasn't been any significant development as such yeah somebody has written something about children using uh, i mean yes. some kind of yes. use it's a, it's a question by gargi who is a tyba student and she asks how signs are helpful for children or kids to understand the meaning of a particular thing so she is interested in knowing how the dynamics of signs operate uh, operate <laughs> yeah uh signs yeah signs are used uh, for children hello sorry i had a call uh, yeah yeah sorry Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were saying yeah, something I, about. I, yeah, I had a call. So again, um, oh, okay. yeah, signs are used for uh, for kids for suggesting something. So one of the uh, practical utilities of uh, the world of science is is that I mean they can be understood by 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 people very easily. Uh, even an illiterate person. Uh, can understand a sign uh, because uh, reading a sign doesn't necessarily require literacy skill so signs can be used for for the kids to communicate something right for example uh, there are uh, lavatories for boys and girls and if you want kids to really use separate lavatories there can be a sign of a boy or a girl 
uh, on the door and that will have some uh, suggestive meaning for, for the kids that is fine but uh, you know we are already into into the world which is marked by uh, a lot of uh, ideological clashes and that creates a problem for the socialization of the kids for example uh, uh, when you go to a toy market of, or a stationary mart there are so many things which are meant for girls and they are in pink so i have a daughter who is uh, 12 uh, years old and until now i haven't asked her uh, in the recent times but until a few months ago she used to like only one color and that is pink so i was just helpless whenever i used to take her to market uh, she would always insist on buying sandals uh, uh, in pink or some other dress materials in pink so uh, uh, where do uh, children you know gain this kind of symbolism so there is a lot of market now uh, which certainly has imposed a lot of symbolism on the kids which certainly uh, would be harmful to their own uh, socialization if you want your child to be reared as uh, uh, as a feminist child as a gender sensitive child uh, you will have to be very careful about it and signs are not just meaningless i mean though we recognize uh, some limited value limited utility of signs as such yes that is true and uh, i i uh, do agree with you 100% that the market has imposed that kind of symbolism on children so children really don't have any choice in that as of now at least or even their parents do not have any choice okay so uh, i don't see any more questions now in the youtube chat so uh, i think we can now uh, proceed towards concluding uh, this lecture so let me uh, invite our uh, student gargi pundalik to offer a vote of thanks gargi would you please uh, put your switch on your camera yeah okay yes ma'am there she is. yeah good evening everyone Oh, I'm Gargi Punlik from TYBA. And Gargi, uh, just a minute, Gargi. Just a minute. You are not visible in the studio. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah. Please go on. Good evening. Myself, Gargi Punlik. I'm from TYBA. Uh, today I am here to extend uh, my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Dilip Chavan sir for an enlightening lecture on reading signs. Uh, his insightful perspectives have undoubtedly broadened our understanding of interpreting certain cues in various aspects of life. Uh, as we reflect on his words, let us embrace the wis wisdom encapsulated in Albert Einstein's quote, uh, the only source of knowledge is experience. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, the principal, Dr. Maheshwari Gavit and the Department uh, of English, Pemra Sarada College, and all our teachers for organizing this online lecture series. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Gargi. So uh, with this, uh, Dilip, can you just please come on screen for a moment? Hello. OK. Uh, I think the there is no good connectivity with the speaker today. So um, with the vote of thanks by Gargi, let me just declare that this lecture is over and we will have another lecture tomorrow at the same time, 4 p.m. by Dr. Anand Kulkarni. So thank you all for uh, viewing this and also posting your comments and questions in the chat box. Thank you, students, and thank you, my colleagues. Bye. See you tomorrow.